Hi there, this is Grant, and welcome to part two of the three-part tutorial on StoryMap.js. In part one, I gave you a brief introduction to StoryMap.js and showed you how to use the authoring tool at the end of that tutorial, just briefly. And in part two here, we're going to focus in on how to build a story map. There's a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. After logging into the site with your Google account, click the Make a Story Map button. If you don't have a story map yet, click the New button and then give that story map a title. I've already done that, and so I'm going to click into the title of my story map, which loads the story map authoring tool. Here we see the title screen of your story map. And just to recap quickly, in the middle you see a map. On the left side you see a column where your slides live. At the bottom left is where you add any media you want to add to your story map. And on the bottom right you see a place to add your headline and a text editor to add any text you want to use to describe the story map slide. And finally, if you want to add an image to the background of the slide, click this button at the bottom right-hand corner, and you can either add a color or a background image to the slide. Now, as I said in the first part of the tutorial, I'm creating a short story map about the first five temples of an 88 temple pilgrimage on the island of Shikoku in Japan. So let's build an introduction to that story map on this title screen. When you're building your slides, normally you'd start off by adding a location on the map. But we don't add a location to this slide because the title slide, by default, displays an overview of all the locations we add to our story map slides. So we skip adding a location and jump right to adding some media. Now, I actually haven't visited these temples, so I need a source for my content. So luckily, I found an excellent Wikipedia article about the pilgrimage. I'll switch over to it here. So in this article about the pilgrimage, I see some images, and down the screen here, I see a list of all of the temples in the pilgrimage, complete with coordinates for each of the temples. This is going to be a great resource for creating my story map. So if I scoop back up to the top of the page here, I see that this image at the top would make a great image for my title screen, because it gives an overall view of the pilgrimage on the island of Shikoku. So how do I go about using that picture? First, you click into the picture, then click on More Details. Now there are a number of options here, but I want to link to this picture on Wikipedia. So I'm going to use Use This File on the web. I'll click that, and you'll see a dialog box giving me all the information I need. What I want is the file URL, so I'm going to copy that. I'll switch back to my story map and paste it in the URL for your media. Paste it there. When I click away from that spot, it loads the image and gives me a little thumbnail to show me that it's connected to that image. So obviously, this image isn't mine, so I have to provide an attribution to the real owner. That information is back here in this dialog box in the attribution field. Now, I like to use the HTML version of this information, so I'm going to click the little box beside there, click into it, it gets automatically selected. I'll copy it and then come back to the story map and paste it in the credit field. I won't add a caption to this image because I'll be adding some introductory text with the text editor in just a bit. But now that we've done a little bit of work on our story map, I'll want to go up into the left-hand corner here and click the Save button. That saves my changes so I don't lose my work. Now that's a habit you'll really want to get into as you're building your story maps. OK, now what we want to do is add a headline, which in this case is going to be a title, really, of the uh, entire story map because it's the title screen. So I'll just click into the headline field and paste in my title. And for the introductory text, what I'm going to do is go back to this Wikipedia article and rework this first paragraph, which introduces the article, and use it to introduce my story map. Now, since this is a how to build a story map tutorial and not a how to watch me type tutorial, I'll do that work off screen and I'll paste the result into this field here. And I won't add a background image to this slide, so I won't need the background options button here. But what I do want to do is give an attribution to the source of this text, which was the uh, Wikipedia article. So what I'll do is click this button again to get out of the edit HTML mode, add a couple of paragraph markers, and then type in my source. What I want to do is provide a link to that Wikipedia article. So I'll go back to that article, click into the address field, copy the text, come back, select that text I just typed in, and then use the link button 
to provide a link to that Wikipedia article. I'll paste that in, and I do want to open this link in a new window. I'll insert the link, and there's our link there. Okay, now with that work, I want to go ahead and save my work, and then click the preview button to see what our slide looks like so far. We've got our image that we added. The attribution for that image shows up just beneath it. We've got the title of the story map, the introductory text, and now my link to that Wikipedia article. Good, we're cooking. Now this Start Exploring button showed up on its own. That's one of the options you have, and we'll cover that when we cover the Options button a little later. Okay, let's start adding some slides to our story map. To do that, just click the Add Slide button here. Now, by the way, if you ever want to get rid of a slide, just hover over the icon, click on the little X in the top right-hand corner, and click Delete if you want to actually delete that slide. I don't, so I'll click on Cancel. If we have a look at this slide, the only difference between this slide and the title slide we just saw is that now we have a search field to find locations on the map. Now, I could search a location like a city or an address, but in this case, remember on that Wikipedia article, I have GPS coordinates to pinpoint the locations of the temples I want to have in my story map. So I'm going to use those. I'll go back to my Wikipedia article, and in the temple section, you see that there are coordinates for each of the temples. So what I'll do is select the coordinates. And by the way, before we go, the coordinates do have to be in this format. This is called decimal degrees format. The first two numbers are the degrees, and after the decimal are the minutes of the either the northing or the easting in this case. So I'll copy those, come back to my map, and paste them in the search field here. Now you'll notice nothing happens yet because I have to massage these just a little bit for the map to understand that these are coordinates that it's dealing with. What I do is type LAT colon in front of the latitude number, and I type LON colon in front of the longitude number. And as you can see, it finds that place on the map on the island of Shikoku. Now I can zoom in to that spot if I want on the map to see that it's correct. And if I don't really like the exact placement of the marker, I can just grab onto it and place it where I like. Okay, great. Now in this case, instead of providing a link to a file, I want to show you how to upload a file to your story map site. I'm still going to use Wikipedia for my source though, so I'll go back to Wikipedia, and I'm going to use this image as my image on the story map. I'll click on More Details, and in this case, I'm going to download the image to my computer and then upload it to the story map site. So I'll click Download. What I would do from here is choose a, an image size. I think 1024 is a pretty good size. I could either right-click on this and, and choose Save Link As, or I can click on that, then right click and save image as. In my case, I've already done that, so I'm just going to cancel out of there. And before I go, I want to grab this attribution, actually the HTML version of the attribution, and I'll copy that because I'll need it in just a second. Okay, I'll come back to my slide, and while I'm at it, I'm just going to uh, paste in that attribution here. And since I've already downloaded the image to my computer, I will click on Upload an Image, and go find that image on my computer. There it is there. I'll click Open. I've already done this once in the past, so it's reminding me, you've already got an image with, that, with this name. Do you want to replace this image? Yeah, I do. I'll, I'll replace the image that's already on the Story Map site. And when I do that, you see the thumbnail appear here in the media section. Okay, the next thing to do would be to add the headline and the descriptive text for this slide. But since we've already gone through how to do that on the title slide, I'll do that off camera. Likewise, I'll add the coordinates to the location on the second slide and then come back when I'm finished those two things. Okay, I've added the text for that first slide and added the location for the second slide. So that's where we're starting off here. And in this slide, what I want to do is instead of adding an image, add a link to a YouTube video. I've already found a YouTube video, so I'll just go to it right here. Now what I need to do is go and copy the address to this video, and then go back to my slide and paste it in the URL to your media field. When I do that, and then click away, it loads that YouTube video 
as a thumbnail in the media section, just like it did for the images. Now to give credit, I'll go back to the video and find that the name of the, the owner, copy that, come back to my story map and paste that in and then type in something like video by then the owner's name, just so that owner has the credit for that video. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish building the rest of the slides for the story map because we've pretty well covered all of the options for adding simple media and text to our slides. I'll come back when that's finished and we can review the work that I've done. Okay, I finished up creating the rest of the slides for the story map, so let's take a look at the finished product. I'm going to stay here in the authoring tool so I can easily show you how each of these slides is constructed, but just be aware that what you see here won't be exactly the way it looks to others when you share out your story map, but it's pretty close. Okay, here on the first title slide, you can see that all the locations for the temples are marked on the map. And by the way, the map view here is automatic and can't be changed by the authoring tool. Now, to go to the next slide, I could click the Start Exploring button here or click the right arrow. I'll click Start Exploring and we advance to the next slide. Here we've uploaded an image and provided some text, so there's not too much new here to talk about in terms of how to build slides. I'll go to the next slide. On this slide for Temple 2, I've added a YouTube video and a background image. So a couple of things to notice here. When you add a background image, you should be aware that the text you add in the text editor is a little bit more difficult to read. Now, you might be fine with that, but just be aware of that. The second thing is that the map icon that displays here by default reflects the kind of media that you've added. So here in this case, it's a YouTube logo. Okay, let's go to the third slide. Okay, on the Temple 3 slide, I'll just go to the edit view and you can see here that I've added a link to a Wikipedia article as my media for this slide. StoryMap detects the link to Wikipedia, grabs the first paragraph from that article and displays a W on the icon to show that that's a Wikipedia link. If I click over to the preview, you can see that it also gives an attribution to Wikipedia. When you add a Wikipedia link, it automatically puts the text on a black background, which makes it a little easier to read. And by the way, you see this white border here, that doesn't show up in the final result when you share your story map. I'm not sure what's going on here in the authoring view, but that does not show up in the final result. Okay, let's go to the next slide. On the slide for Temple 4, I provided some descriptive text and a background image, and again, provided attributions for both. Finally, on Temple 5, this goes back to what we saw before, an image and some text, but no background image. So you can see how you can mix and match the use of elements that appear on the right side of the story map. You have a number of media options to choose from, and I should mention that I'm not covering a few options mentioned on the story map homepage. Let's have a quick look at what those are just so you know they exist. In addition to the media that I've shown you, you can also add a tweet from Twitter. I actually haven't tested this one out yet. You can also add links to images on Flickr. Now I couldn't get the default share links to work for me from Flickr, but I did get the links from the embed code to work for me. I found this option to be kind of half working for me. It's also advertised that you can add a link to a Google map. Now this option didn't work at all for me. Now it could be something I was doing wrong, or maybe there is some disconnect between the software and Google maps these days. Another option is adding a link to streamed audio on SoundCloud. This worked great for me, and I think it would make a really interesting slide to combine maps and audio. Finally, I should mention that the video works not only for YouTube, as I showed you, but also for Vimeo and Dailymotion. Okay, that about covers the building of story map slides, and we finished part two of the tutorial. In the third and final part of this series on story map JS, I'll cover the rest of the important buttons you see on the editor screen, including down here the marker options button, the options button, which allows you to change options for the story map as a whole, and how to share or embed your story map so that others can experience your stories. If you want to jump ahead to part three right now, just click the link you see on the screen or in the text below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this tutorial helped you learn how to build story map slides and even got you thinking about building your own story maps in the future.